welcome back everyone as you can see from this lovely drone footage we're in an older part of denver we just started a new basement dig out job the guys just this morning finished saw cutting into the basement so i'm here to set up the cameras and get everything ready to rock and roll brino was kind enough to send out their new camera the tlc 300 it's this one here on the right these are the previous cameras that we've been using here on gold's concrete the construction housing is pretty large on this one but if you were to get the normal one there is about the same so this camera is actually smaller this one's a little bit bigger so i'm excited to see just how well they perform if they stack up if this one blows this one out of the water throughout this series we're going to be testing these two cameras and by the end of this basement dig out we should have a nice comparison for you guys so if you're looking to buy some time lapse cameras you'll know to either do the tlc 2000 or the tlc 300 but with that said i'm going to head into the basement here get these set up and then i'm going to kind of guide you through what we're going to be doing on this project and then after that we'll follow it up with a time lapse of the first week as you can see already entering the little sectioned off area we already have some dirt piled up from the entry hole that the guy saw cut but we really love these kinds of jobs just because we have nice access so as you can see we have this nice long corridor out to the street which will make it really nice for logistics and you can see this is where the saw cutting took place pretty decent sized hole to get in there but i'm gonna go ahead and move this board hop in the basement and then we'll take a look inside and i'll walk you through everything all right i can tell you right off the bat i really like this entrance hole it's a lot bigger than what we usually have so this is going to be really nice for your logistics like i said kind of a smaller dig out on this one you can see the kind of square footage it does go all the way back there this is like the exact definition of a crawl space <laughs> so not much room to really stand or even like crawl if i'm being honest i don't know how i'm gonna get the cameras all the way back there i'll probably get one back there and then one right here by the entrance but not too sure about that one anyways taking you guys through this you can see it is an older home but it does have it looks like it's not too old from the bricks and all that good stuff and then their support beams but you can see we slowly start to tear back the vapor barrier that they have in their crawl space and then we slowly start to inch away at all this dirt and material right here the goal for this project is the homeowner wants a nine foot ceiling basement so we're gonna bring this down this is about two feet right here so we got to bring this up at least seven feet down so it's going to be pretty deep in terms of material that we got to excavate luckily like i said before it's not too big compared to some of the other jobs that we've done but it will add a nice amount of square footage to the existing home another thing to mention looking over here you get a good idea of this so this was the existing foundation you can kind of tell by this l shape that they have right here that they saw cut and as you can see as we take a closer look down here there's dirt underneath this so this is where the existing foundation kind of rested because the dirt was around two three feet high and so what we have to do is we come in we have to dig down seven feet and then we have to leave some dirt around the edges here and you can kind of see them doing that here you can see that they don't go all the way up next to the wall and that's just to ensure the stability of the structure so they're going to do that on both sides you can see that here as well we, we leave at least like a foot or two of just some variance right here away from the wall so this house still has something to sit on and we just don't collapse it by digging out this basement so that's really nice to see especially right here on the first so i can showcase for you guys as i said before they're slowly going to expand in either direction and then luckily they don't really have much plumbing or electrical down here so it looks like this is going to be a pretty straightforward job in terms of dig out all this material for the slab for the basement floor and call it a day so this is really nice to see with that kind of walk through for you guys i'm going to go ahead and set up the cameras like i said brino was kind enough to send out their new one so i'm really excited to see how this one performs it's supposed to be do better in low light which as you can tell by the basement it's really dark in there so hopefully this one does perform a little bit better in this scenario i'm going to go ahead and set these bad boys up and then i'll get back to you guys in the video all right so we got that camera in place i switched it out for the smaller one just because i kind of want to try it in low light with just all this light and i don't want to blow it out with the other one so i'm going to put the other one over there in the back corner i do have to put batteries in there as well i forgot to do that so i'm gonna do that real quick i'll be back here in like two seconds and we'll get back to recording all right i just threw the new batteries in here i'm gonna run over here to the corner put this bad boy up and we should be good on camera setup this is the fun part time to get nice and dirty all right let's do All right, that's both cameras set up. So the worst part about this is just all the spider webs, but once you get over that, it's not too bad. So like I said before, I'm gonna let these bad boys record this week. Hopefully we get some nice progression on this whole kind of entry hole here, this entry point. And then here, hopefully by the end of the week, I'll be back with more footage, kind of explaining what the guys did. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let's hop right into these time lapses then. 
Starting out first with the new TLC 300, as you can see the image looks really good. I haven't done any post processing on any of these clips so we can get a raw comparison of the footage. And I will say that the TLC 300 performed really well in the low light. Switching over here to the TLC 2000, you'll instantly see what I'm talking about. The blacks are really black over there in the corner. And the dynamic range is just a little bit less than that of the TLC 300 and then switching back you'll see what I mean. So you can see everything is just a lot brighter and there's a lot more detail in where there would be shadows. So I'm really impressed with that. And not only that, it looks like it's more vibrant out of the box as well compared to the TLC 2000 giving us a better image. It is a little grainy, but I mean both of them are. So I usually run these through Topaz Labs AI to get rid of that. But straight out of camera, it's very... It's not bad, I will say. I'm very impressed with the, what they've done with this system compared to the TLC 2000. This is about to wrap up the first week here, but I'm going to leave you guys with some extra footage of my process of recording these videos. So here's that for you guys. Enjoy. All right, so I made it to my vehicle. And now I'm going to go ahead and change out the batteries on the cameras, grab the footage off them. So with these cameras, I like to use reusable batteries. That way we're not buying double A's all the time. So I got those in here. These are the fresh new batteries. As you can see, super easy to open, all that good stuff. I haven't really showed this on the channel yet in terms of like the whole process for filming, but this is it right here. So we got that, and then we're gonna take out this one as well. And you can just see the ease of use on these bad boys, super easy to mess around with. This one just pops out like that as well. Let's go ahead and turn these bad boys off. There we go. So over a week, so last week I was here, this thing had roughly, I wanna say 76% battery and it's still going pretty strong. It was recording all week long, Monday through Friday. So on a week's worth of battery, these two AA batteries lasted about a week. You probably push it to two weeks, but that's pushing it. It might run out like on the 13th day, but still really good. And then let's go ahead and check out this bad boy. So this is my first time using it. Oh, wow, okay. So it was at 100% when I put it up and it's only at 90 now. So I'm a little suspicious. I'm su I think I didn't set this up right. So let's see if it even recorded. I hope it did. But if that's how good the battery life is, 10% for a week, that's pretty damn good. So we're about to find out here. Perfect. It looks like it recorded everything this week. One thing to note that it does record all these in .avi files. So you do have to do a little bit of processing to get them to work in something like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, any kind of editing software. So they're not really viewable right out of the sd card which is kind of unfortunate but they do preserve a lot of quality and make the file sizes a little bit smaller so if you have the program available it's not too hard i just use this one i'll show you guys but it transfers the avi file converts the avi file into an mp4 so i can watch it but we got those so that's all good now i'm going to go ahead and export this bad boy back out and plug it back into the camera you can see just how easy this process is all you're doing is just dumping the footage putting it back in and then changing out the battery plug that bad boy back in and while i got this out i'll change out the battery so like i said before two double a batteries rechargeable just in here so we can go ahead and pop these suckers out and i like to just put them right here for now and then i'll put them in the box later and then with that done we're gonna go ahead and put in the new double a batteries just like so and check the battery life on this to make sure that everything is well and you can see right there on the battery almost full probably like 90 percent the only sucky thing with the rechargeable batteries is they're never 100% even though they tell you they're fully charged they're usually like 80 to 90% charged which like I showed you before works good for like a week weekly basis so we're going to go ahead and set this one to record and then put this plate back on and just like that this bad boy is ready to go so I'll throw this back in the housing later and I'll go set the cameras back up but now what I'm really excited to see is the TLC 300 they got a nice and labeled for you. SD card is right here. Oh, all right, nice. And then you can see here, the SD card is the bigger version. This one uses a micro SD. As you can tell, it's a pretty small camera, but this one uses the larger one, which is kind of nice for ease of use. It recorded, ladies and gentlemen, seven days, and it only took 10% battery. That's pretty, it's pretty incredible. I'm not gonna lie. It was so good to the point where I got a little bit scared. <laughs> But no, I'm really impressed. So we're recording seven days and I only used 10% of the battery. That's pretty astounding, I'm not gonna lie. And then I'm gonna convert all these AVI files to MP4 and kind of review them here in my car and then see how everything looks. Let's go ahead and throw this into my little file converter. I'll tell you guys what it is. So if you have AVI, AVI files that you need to convert it to MP4, this is the program to use. It is called Free MP4 Converter. It's free. 
it's, it's in the name so it's nice they do throw some ads at you because you know got to pay them bills but it is free so i'm going to go ahead and add in my files here and then i will show you guys the before and after footage and then we'll hop into the time lapse we got this footage all merged into one thing and I'm going to go ahead and watch this right now. And I'll throw it up on screen for you guys. We'll do a side-by-side -side comparison view. So I will say that the low light on this is really good. It is a little bit grainy, but it is very dark in there. So that is to be expected. It's not going to be absolutely perfect. But I am impressed as to how the dynamic range of it is. Because as you know, the basements are pretty pitch black in there. And then you have the light streaming in, which is just like pure straight white light. And we have a really nice dynamic range that's lighting everything up. So honestly, I'm very impressed so far. Wow. This is really good. And just, for, just for comparison, I'm going to go take a peek at the TLC 2000 and see what that looks like. Oh, yeah, that is significantly darker. Okay. Wow. All right, so they did it. They did a good job at the low light on this bad boy. Sweet. All right. And this is going to bring us to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the comparison and then a little bit of the behind the scenes in terms of recording these videos. But with that said, I hope to see you guys in next week's video.